Over the last number of years, there's been a massive increase in those people who have a career in influence marketing, both working for themselves from home as a lifestyle business and also working for digital agencies. And there is a living to be made from it. But is it just all about engagement, followers, and building that profile online? Or are there other things that you need to consider? As the industry grows, so too does the tax man's interest in it, as you can imagine. In fact, last year, according to one of their surveys, over 30,000 people in the UK made money from this very thing of blogging, influence marketing and content creation. So what do you need to know about it? What are the important things that you should know to keep you right? As an accountant and one that actually loves social media herself, I am asked again and again that question of how do I deal with my taxes if I'm an influencer marketing? And you know what? Because it's so new, it's only been recent that the legislation has actually been updated and has been released by HM Revenue and Customs. So what I want to do on this short video is to make it very simple for you and to approach the questions that you have asked me on this video and set it out, hopefully, quite clearly and concisely for you so that you can follow along. I would imagine that it's not just you as the influencer who is interested in this question. I would imagine that as the industry grows and as popularity for this type of marketing increases, that those who are the brands, those people who you're speaking to about creating content for them and promoting their pro product, they will also want to know where they stand on this side of the law. So there's a couple of different things here. Number one is what if you receive a fee for your efforts? So let's say a brand approaches you and they say, um, we would like to pay you a fee of 500 pounds, but for the return of that fee, we would want you to promote our product on Instagram stories, on Facebook or whatever that is. That's quite simple actually, because a fee has been agreed and that is all subject to tax at your appropriate tax rate. Where the confusion lies is whenever you have been gifted an item, okay? So what you have to bring it back to is, is there a contract in place? So for example, a brand contacts you and they've drawn up a contract. It might not be very, a very big contract or a very long contract, but there is one in place that agrees that you will receive a product or a service, which is worth a monetary value, and you will receive the benefit of that gift or service in return for some content and for some promotion of that item or service that you have received. So this is probably one of the most um, confusing areas because it's one that you would imagine that you wouldn't be taxed on because actually you're receiving something for no money. But in fact, you need to look back in that contract and if it's not there, you need to speak to the brand and agree with them what that monetary or financial value is of that gift or benefit and you're actually subject to tax on that. So that is a really important one because obviously you put yourself online for everybody to see, for the world to see, and there will be a footprint of that. And therefore it would be very easy to get caught out in this area. So I'm just putting it out there to say, if there's a contract in place, and if there's been um, a monetary value to the benefit that you're receiving, noted in that contract, if there's not, go and get that monetary value and also you should be taxed on that benefit. Now in quite a few instances, that will be the cost value of the item. It won't actually be the retail value, which is great because you'll be taxed on the lesser of that value if that's what's needed. Yeah, so that's a big one, unexpected gifts. So I would imagine that as an influencer, you are bombarded by Royal Mail, TNT, um, all those delivery drivers with free goods. And I know myself that it is tempting as a business owner to send gifts for free to try and get something back. Um, this is a nice area because if you're genuinely gifted items that you didn't agree to do any content for, but maybe you do a bit of promotion anyway, you are not subject to tax on that because there's been no contract. So for example, um, let's say a lovely boutique sends you a lovely top and a scarf to wear and they haven't agreed a fee with you. They maybe, maybe you think they're being quite cheeky by doing it, but whatever you think of them, they've sent you a gift. You have worn it and you have um, got out your phone and snapped a photo of yourself wearing it and in essence promoted their brand for free. It's tax free. 
So that's, that's quite a nice one for you because you can enjoy the benefit of the gift, but you're not taxed on it. Yeah, this is one that I asked about a lot. So this is just a lifestyle business. I don't really make very much from it, but I do have another job. I don't think I should be taxed on it. Unfortunately, that is incorrect. So if it's a sideline business for you, even if you're only earning a couple of thousand pounds a year, but it is looked at as a second job, and therefore you should complete a tax return for that. Of course, if it's bigger than that, so if you're earning a good um, income from it, it all should be declared HMRC according to the rules that we've just discussed. How do you go about doing that then? Well, you do need to register with HMRC and in the next little section, I'll talk about how to do that. It's very simple to register with HMRC and one of the easiest ways to do that is to register for self-assessment. What you can do is head over to Google and type in register for self-assessment and it will bring up a very straightforward form that you can complete. It may just ask you to set up an online account first and if that's the case, go ahead and do it. Get your details and then put in your personal details, things like your name, date of birth, address and national insurance number and you will be registered for self-assessment. Now let's say this is a slightly bigger affair for you. Let's say you're really gonna make a thing out of it. You're gonna be quite profitable. You want to have maybe employees and, and make a real go out of this. Before you do anything, I would speak to a good accountant, one that knows the industry well, and get some advice about whether it may be good to set up as a limited company. There are three different things that I would consider before doing that. Number one is, is it tax efficient for you or are you gonna end up paying more tax? Number two, who are you working with? Because quite often big brands um, will possibly pay more um, if you're a limited company because there's just that more um, professional feel about it. And number three, are you concerned about risk in any way? So obviously a limited company, if things don't quite work out the way they've planned, there is no risk to your personal assets unless you've signed a personal guarantee. I know that not might not make sense, um, but I'm free to answer any questions if you want to DM me, if, if that's something that you can't quite get your head around or you would like a chat about that. So what rate of tax can you expect to pay? Well, this is a bit of a, a hard one to answer because this really depends on your other personal circumstances. So let's say, we'll take an example. Let's say that you are a midwife and you work in the health service and you're earning an income of 25,000 a year for the hours that you work. You decide then that you want to start up a little sideline blog and it goes quite well and you start to get paid for some of your work that you're doing. What happens is it's seen as your second job and you will be taxed at 20% of that income that you receive. You might only make 2,000, 3,000 pounds but you're still taxed on it because it's your second job. Let's say, for example, you're a stay-at-home mum and you start a blog and it's really, really small. It might make you about £12,000 a year in profit. You would still, it's best that you still complete a tax return for that just to keep a track of everything and to keep yourself right. However, you're probably not going to have to pay tax on that if it's in and around the £12,000 because that's the tax-free allowance. Just beware though, because as you start to make more money, so as you start to make profit above 12,500, you will have to pay tax and you most definitely will have to pay national insurance. So it's something that you should keep an eye on and you should get the right advice about. This is a really good one. What expenses can I claim as a social media marketer? So yeah, there's lots that you can claim. Some of the more obvious ones are equipment. So you're gonna to have to get your phone, you might have to get your lighting. Um, you may have to buy some apps on your mobile phone, all of your software. Maybe you have to go to events in order to upskill um, your editing skills. That's all allowable too, as long as it's relevant to your business and to what you're doing within your business. Your travel costs are also allowable, so your flights, your um, train journeys, your taxi rides, that is all allowable. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that would be allowable, but all of your advertising costs, website costs, Maybe you have your name listed on a website in order to get some work for that. All that, all that subscription is allowable too. Of course, there's gonna be less obvious ones and that's where the likes of myself comes in. You do need to get that proper advice. 
because there are additional ways that you can save tax. But as I say, those are the ones that you should know about. One of them actually being the use of home allowance. So as a blogger and an influence marketer, you will be working a lot from home. You will spend a lot of time editing photos, blogging, and all of that time can be claimed back. There's something called the simplified method with HM Revenue and Customs, and that is based on the number of hours that you work from home. So it's something to check out and to make sure you record it on your tax return to get that tax relief. Record keeping is a biggie. This is actually one of the most important things other than knowing what your duties are for your taxes. So you need to keep a receipt for every single business expense that you pay for. This is so important because without a receipt, we cannot prove that that expense has been paid to a certain supplier and we cannot claim that back. Now I get the question a lot, oh, I can't find this receipt, what should I do? And quite often I will say, can you go back and try to find it? And if not, is it traceable through your bank statement or is there some correspondence that we can prove that that expense did take place? But best to keep all receipts. You will also notice that if you pay by credit card, they will give you a little credit card slip out of the merchant terminal. That is not counted as a receipt. You should actually keep the proper paperwork to tell the receipt to note exactly what you have purchased or what you're subscribing to in order to claim that expense back off your tax. But what's so important about that? Why, why, um, why claim all these expenses? Well, if your income is £50,000 for the year, and let's say you have expenses of 15,000, but you can only find receipts for 5,000, you're actually gonna pay about 2,000 pounds too much tax. So this is so important and there are ways to manage that. There are lots of apps out there in the market to help you manage your paperwork. One of the ones that I recommend if you're really, really small, so let's say you're only starting out and you're doing this from home and you've only a few expenses, one of the really nifty softwares is called OneTap. So that's a one digit followed by tap. And you can download that to your phone and you can record all of your expenditure by taking a picture of it and it will store it there until you come to do your tax return and it's all there in the one place. There are of course other apps like Xero and Receipt Bank. And this would really be as you start to make a proper living out of it, it would be really good to track that income and expenditure. Do you know what your profit is? Do you know what your projected tax might be? These are all really important factors to consider and we love software to do this. We are way up there in terms of software advice for our accountants and clients. So I would ask you to reach out if you're not sure what software you should be using or even if you should be using any, please do reach out and have a chat with one of us because we can help. So I hope that's been helpful. I know that I've covered a lot of content and sometimes it can be very confusing. Some of the language might not make sense. So what I would say is I'm gonna write a blog post that's all gonna be in writing and I'm gonna release that to my bio very shortly. This video though can be stored. It's gonna be on my Instagram TV and it's gonna be on YouTube following that. And if you do have any questions, please do just reach out. Um, I'll put my contact details on the next screen where you can get in contact with me and um, I'd be happy to help. So thanks everybody for listening and I really hope that that has been helpful for you.